Welcome back friends. It's the holiday season and I have a special video for you. Today will be part two of our top 10 CRT repairs for this year. I'll be showing some clips that include never before seen footage and I've got some fresh edits for you. Hey, and as a bonus, I'm throwing in a sixth monitor repair in this video. Now sit back and relax with me and Brutus as we celebrate the end of 2020 and Merry Christmas. Let's kick things off today with the Sony PVM 2030 professional video monitor. This is an awesome example of an early professional CRT and the Art Deco cube format is still desired by many artists as well as museums around the world. You'll run into issues where components will fail out in this monitor. Now, a good thing is, is the main deflection board is pretty easy to service. It's on the side. This particular repair was quite tricky. I had to rebuild a couple of traces that had been destroyed by past repair attempts. So I had to rebuild a lot of traces by adding jumper wires and also using the legs of capacitors and other components to rebuild some of those paths for the electricity to flow. Since I had the monitor torn apart already, I went ahead and also serviced the power supply on this unit. It's really difficult to get to the power supply inside of the monitor if you don't already have things like the input board off and other boards out of the way. Again, it's a very desirable monitor. It has a built-in stereo audio system. It also supports a remote control. This display is a true 20 inches in diagonal length, so it's one inch larger than most of the other 20 inch monitors. The resolution is 560 TV lines. Now the monitor does not support component, only RGB, S-Video, and composite. It's a great option, but you have to remember this one does require internal calibration. And since it's one of the earlier PVMs, it often needs servicing. Let's take a look at everybody's favorite knockoff Sony PVM. That's the Olympus OEV series. Now look, it's not really a knockoff PVM. Everything internally is identical to the Sony PVM M2 MDU series of monitors. So it has 600 TV lines of resolution and it supports analog video in the format of 240p and 480i. You're gonna find support for BNC, S-Video, Component, Composite, and RGB with sync. It pretty much accepts every type of sync on this monitor. Now again, since this is an identical monitor to that M series, it does have the same circuit boards inside of it. And because of that, it does suffer from the red, green, blue line issue that is due to the vertical blanking line having capacitors that are not properly designed with the right voltage and capacitance to last long enough inside the monitor. And that causes those red, green, and blue lines to droop into the viewing area. So you need to at least check into getting those two capacitors checked out that do cause that issue, or you'll have a screen with red, green, and blue lines in it, and then you overcorrect that in the vertical blanking setting, and eventually your whole monitor goes kaput and pops out, and you lose multiple circuits along that vertical blanking line because eventually those capacitors just fail out and cause spikes in voltage, thus damaging your priceless Olympus OEV. Oh yeah, and Olympus monitors tend to sell for a little bit less on eBay, so I'm just guessing that people don't know uh, to look for them as much as they do to look for Sony PVM M2 MDU monitors. Moving on, here was a fun repair. This was the 8041Q PVM. Now this line of PVM suffers from some common issues and they're all mostly related to the age and the size of the PVM. Since they're so small, and compact. A lot of the boards are right next to each other. 
And the solder on the PCBs that was used does not appear to be the best quality for that time period. It can be common to have things like cold solder joints develop on a lot of these PCBs inside this monitor. This PVM needed the color board completely re-soldered. The problem was is you would turn this monitor on for a couple of minutes and it would be working normally and all of a sudden the color would go out and it would go to black and white. So if you have a situation like that where all of a sudden you'll lose color or you may not be able to get color to begin with, there's a possibility that you have a cold solder joint somewhere on your color processing board inside the monitor and that can affect all the 804 series. Now look, every time I talk about these eight inch monitors, I get the same reply in the comments. Oh, who would really wanna pay this much money to play on an eight inch screen? Uh, you know, those are probably the same people that are watching this repair video on a device or a phone with a screen smaller than the eight inch screen on these monitors. People play games on things like Nintendo Switches, which their screen is not much bigger than an eight inch screen. So hey, if all you got is space for an eight inch screen or smaller, don't let that inhibit you from not having a great high quality PVM. All right, now we're back with our second half of the eight inch monitor highlight, and this is 8044Q. Now this one also suffers from some common issues that does happen with some of these PVMs, especially the ones that have higher hours. One of the more common things is the power supply will go dead and you won't have any AC power. Now sometimes you can still get DC current into the monitor and test it and run it that way. Another thing that can happen besides that power supply going bad is the tube can burn out on these, uh, especially if it again has over 30, 40,000 hours on it. Most of these were made in the early to mid 90s. So it's always something that's worth checking out on these little beautiful tiny Trinitron screens. I mean, did I mention I really like these things? Because I do, they're, they're great. I mean, you can test every console on them and they can be toted around to your best friend's house. Now let's talk about the biggest PVM I worked on in 2020, that being the mighty Sony PVM 3230 Professional CRT Monitor. This monitor will not only test the strength of your retinas, but also your back. So never attempt to lift something this large by yourself. Always bring a friend. All right, I'll tell you an interesting story about this monitor. It came to me from Eric. Eric drove the monitor to me from the East Coast and made me a bargain. If I could get the 3230 to work and look pretty good again, then he would trade me two or three leftover 2530 monitors, which I've been trying to get to work properly for, oh, about two or three months now. But I agreed to that trade because Eric had come into this large lot of very big CRTs uh, by responding locally, I believe, to either Craigslist or OfferUp. Eric found the listing for the PVMs and then went and picked them up from their owner while they were being stored at the owner's ex-in-laws. And they wanted them off their farm property and they needed them gone ASAP. So Eric picked them up. I think there was a total of six or seven 2530s and then this 3230. And one of the scariest parts of this entire repair was when I finally took the shell off the monitor and realized how many spiders were not only living inside of it, but were living under it. This is an unbelievable sight. It's just disgusting. And there's definitely a chance that I could have been bitten hundreds of times in my poor buddy Brutus. We can't have that now. So these spiders had to go. I had to exterminate them and clean the shell off. But afterwards, the monitor looked perfect. I did have to go through and fully service some of the boards on this monitor. And then, of course, recalibrate after recapping and rebuilding some traces in some troubled areas. All right, you guys know there's only one software I primarily use to calibrate all my CRTs and analog displays, and that, of course, is 
the 240p test suite developed by md fourier and my friend artemio they have a wonderful website i'll put a link in the description definitely go check that out if you need the software which you all do need it Now this monitor should come with a disclaimer warning because it's pretty awesome. 240p gaming on a display this large is prone to cause eye bleeding and possibly even pant wetting. But that's really only my personal experiences with this glorious CRT. So now you want the best, huh? Well, you got it. The Sony PVM20L5 is at the top of the professional video monitor food chain. There really aren't that many better options in a CRT. You'd have to move up to something in the Sony BVM line or one of the other multi-format CRTs made by JVC, NEC, Ikigami, or Panasonic. This CRT belongs to Corey from My Life in Gaming and he wanted to get it fully serviced. So I took it apart and initially started working on the deflection board. The small board you see here is the deflection board. This is one of the boards that can need servicing if you have an issue in your PVM. Now Save on Pat does sell a cap kit for this monitor on eBay, but you can also go in the back of the service manual and get a cap list and just replace every one on this board. However, I would only recommend you do that in extreme cases where your monitor is not working at all. One of the biggest problems with the Sony PVM-20L5 is that it doesn't easily expel dust and build up from inside of it. So that tends to build up at the bottom of the monitor and on top of a lot of vital circuit boards. And then what can happen over time is that can cause heat to build up higher than it should be because the dust will act as an insulator, but it also can cause shorts to happen. Corey's PVM came from what I believe was like a broadcast environment and he and another friend were able to get a set of 20L5s. However, his friends shorted out after a year of use and after talking to Corey, we kind of figured that maybe it was because he had never opened his up and serviced it. This is a great example of this problem where the dust cannot be easily removed on its own so it builds up inside the monitor and needs to be cleaned out and hopefully you can do that before it causes any damage to your circuit boards inside. Now the PVM 2005 is a performance animal. It's up there with the BVMs, yet it takes up a lot less size in its smaller form factor. It also includes a built-in mono speaker, which is great for, you know, listening to things in mono. Another positive for the 2005 is that you don't need any expensive input cards to get video signals into the CRT. It does have an expansion slot on the back of the monitor, so you do have an option to add an additional video input card for more video input support. This is one of the highest end CRTs that you just buy, get it serviced, and then keep it. And you don't really need another main monitor in your setup, most likely for a CRT, unless you get an opportunity to upgrade to something like maybe a D24 or one of the 32 inch CRTs or even one of the other XM NEC options. This can be your main monitor. It's so versatile because it can go from 240p and analog and it processes that wonderfully all the way up to 1080i giving you the freedom to hook up even the most modern consoles and video devices to your crt there you have it those were my favorite 11 crt repairs for 2020 thanks for watching and now to move on to 2021 and even more crts